Hey, what's going on everybody? Dr. Strong here and thank you again for watching my video. Please like and subscribe and please comment below if you have any questions or any topics you would like me to cover moving forward with future videos. So my name is Dr. Todd Strong and my mission is to help as many people as possible overcome their chronic health conditions so that they can have the highest quality of life as possible. And today what I want to talk to you about is what is health? because I have asked so many patients and so many people what health is. And it's really funny because everybody gives me a different answer and nobody can really define it. And we can't really define it as a society. And I think that that's what makes it so hard for us to really come together and really achieve optimal health and why our healthcare system is in such shambles. And so if you don't know about me, I am a uh, chiropractor by trade. I am a board certified chiropractic neurologist. I am a certified functional medicine practitioner, and I have spent countless hours understanding human physiology and what's going on with the body. So to dive into today's topic, what is health? So I just wanted to read a few definitions when I just Google what is health. And when we look at them, some of them say it's enjoying health of vigor, body, mind, and spirit. Um, some of them say that it's just a general condition of the body or the mind with reference to soundness and vigor. Um, and then some of it just say that it's merely the absence of injury or illness. And so what I want today is I want to challenge you to think a little bit differently about what health is. And the definition that I have found that I like the most is that it is 100% of your organs function efficiently 100% of the time. So with that, one of the things that we can say is that if you have surgery to remove your tonsils, appendix, bladder, heart, or whatever it may be, then you're probably not in a healthy state. Because we think about sickness and we think about, well, if a person just has a cold and they're sneezing and they, they're coughing and they have a fever, does that really make them sick? Or are they healthy enough to have an immune response to whether it's a bacteria, a virus, an allergen, whatever it may be? So that's where it gets kind of confusing because when we say that somebody is sick, then we don't, we don't really define whether it is that they are they have a healthy organ and immune system that's fighting off a bacteria or virus or if it's that they actually have decreased organ function so for example if you have like decrease in bowel movements and you're only going to the bowel or to the bathroom every couple of days then we could say that your gi system or your gut system isn't functioning a hundred percent because you should be going to the bathroom one to two times a day ideally especially if you're eating appropriately like you should and that would show us that we have a hundred percent function and a hundred percent efficiency of our GI tract now if you're having trouble with those things then we can say maybe that you're not healthy right or let's say that um, you don't get an appropriate immune response when a bacteria or virus enters your body or your immune system let's talk about like autoimmunity actually starts attacking the body itself then we can say that your immune system is not functioning 100% effectively and efficiently as it should be because there was a deficiency that caused it to attack you. And that can look like multiple sclerosis, fibromyalgia, Hashimoto's, Graves' disease. Um, that can look like the celiac disease. There are a multitude of things that that can kind of fall into. So it's really important that we kind of understand what you know is proper function and i think that this is a big key point that a lot of people really don't understand what proper function is today so for me i am very in tune with gut health and i think that that is one thing that if you're going to fix anything you should fix your gut health because it's where 70 percent of your immune system lives especially if you're dealing with like an autoimmune issue i think that that is your biggest bang for your buck when you're trying to get better so with that being said let's kind of dive into that a little bit more um, now, if you're having like flatulence and gas and bloating and diarrhea, constipation, IBS, 
um, you know, if you're having abdominal cramping, if you're having GERD, or if you're having heartburn, a lot of those can, we can say that that is actual dysfunction of the organ system, and it's not working 100% efficiently. And so what we can say that over time that that is going to lead to some of these more severe diseases that, you know, look like celiac disease, that look like diverticulitis, that look like GERD, that look like achalasia, or look like Barrett's esophagus, or these other chronic uh, issues that go on. Especially for me, the biggest ones are leaky gut and dysbiosis because that's what I see most commonly, especially when we take x-rays of patients, we look at their gut and we can actually see abdominal distension and inflammation in the GI tract. And that is something that is purely unique to kind of the wellness way and what they do. So with that being said, I think that you can get a lot of diagnostic criteria from just seeing that and you can kind of understand what's going in your body. Uh, a lot better because especially weight wise and I mean huge component of understanding why you're gaining weight or why you're having weight issues and a lot of that comes down to basically you probably don't have that much adipose tissue or fat tissue in the first place because I see it all the time people are just extremely bloated in their abdominal cavity which makes them look fatter or makes them look like they have a distended belly and so by purely cutting out that distension or that bloating or correcting the dysbiosis that may be going on in your stomach, you can actually reduce the amount of bloating or how far your belly protrudes. It's very interesting. I just had a patient the other day who came in, very nice young lady, and she's like, I look like I'm always pregnant. And people ask me, are you pregnant? When are you due? And it's very mentally traumatizing for her because uh, out of the three biggest stresses for women, it's men, <laughs> sorry, uh, children, and then weight. And that's pretty significant because when we're talking about weight and you're exercising and you're eating less and you're doing everything that these gurus tell you to do and you're not losing weight, then that can be a huge issue mentally, right? But when we took her x-rays, we saw abdominal distension. And what we could say is, look, you're, you don't have any adipose tissue because you can see it on x-ray. You actually have bloating in your lower abdomen, which is protruding your belly. And she was like, oh my God, thank you so much. Like this makes so much sense. Like I, I didn't know for years why it wasn't working. And she's like, I was just mentally tormenting myself saying that, why can't I lose this weight? And there can be more of things that go into that, like hormonal balance and stuff like that. But generally, that's the first place you want to start. And generally, when I do just like a simple GI protocol with most people, they lose 10 to 15 pounds on average. Most of them lose more in the first month once we do kind of like a GI cleanse. And I would recommend that you should do them at least twice a year. But back to like kind of that health function, if we go back and we look at your thyroid, because thyroid is a big one as well. A lot of people have a dysfunctional thyroid or a pseudo-diagnosed dysfunctional thyroid. And what we can say is that they're not healthy because their thyroid isn't functioning at 100% efficiency and effect, um, effectiveness all the time. So there is something going on. Now, if you want me to make an, a thyroid video diving deeper into what is going on with thyroid issues, primary versus secondary thyroid issues, where you have to look at the other parts of the body to see if it is actually the thyroid that is the issue, then just comment below, say, hey, Dr. Strong, I would love to learn more about thyroid and what's going on with it, and uh, really just kind of dive into that. So more than happy to do that. Um, but anyways, a lot of the times we, with thyroid dysfunction, you have to look at like the liver, you also, because a lot of your biotransformation occurs there, you have to look at cortisol patterns because cortisol will inhibit TSH and your metabolically active T3. So there, there are multiple things that kind of can play into thyroid health as well. And just like your heart, if you're having arrhythmias, if you're having brain fog, um, what we can say is, or if you're just having mental sluggishness, we can say that you're probably unhealthy because your organ isn't functioning at 100% efficiency. And it's really, the hard thing is to define this for everybody, but if you notice or other people around you notice that you're starting to decline or that you're having issues, then it's worth kind of diving in and looking at what is going on. For me, 
I would say that gut health, going back into it, I know you've heard me say it over and over, but gut health is the one thing that you should definitely look at more than anything else. Leaky gut leads to leaky brain, leads to brain inflation, inflammation, and a lot of these issues that I currently see in my clinic, and most of the time the best starting place is the gut. So. Uh, what is your definition of health? If you can comment below, just say, this is how I would define health. Do you agree with me that um, it's 100% function of your organs and of their efficiency and effectiveness? Uh, maybe you have a different, maybe you have something better. I would love to hear from you guys what you think health is, uh, how you define it, and just you know, connect with me. I would uh, love to hear from you guys. If you can, uh, there are links to uh, my Facebook group where I have more content. You can come and connect with other people. We're, I think we're at 900 people now. Um, there are also some other materials down below that you can check out in the description link. And yeah, just reach out. If you have any questions, I'm here to help and to help educate everybody because I feel like we've been led astray for so many years. And I have my own health journey and I know how hard it was for me and how long it took me to learn what was really going on with my body and my health. And so I just want to deliver that to you guys so that you can have the best means and the fastest results as possible. Okay. So thank you everybody. Please like, and subscribe. If you haven't to, please share this with your family and friends. I would love to create a discussion about this and see what everybody thinks about health and go from there. So have a great day and I will see you all next time.